Hello, my lovelies, and welcome to the Moving Toward Better podcast. I'm your host, Karen Bemis from movingtowardbetter.com, and I'm here to help you live your best life powered by your unique and amazing personality. Hello, my lovelies, and welcome to season two of the Moving Toward Better podcast. I'm your host, Karen Bemis, and I'm excited to share with you that things are evolving at MTB with new offerings like group and long-term individual coaching, and even a live event in September that I am so excited to tell you about a little later on in the show. The focus of this season is truly creating a life that works for you without guilt, which is why we're starting with talking about mom shaming today. It's a big subject, And I think it's time for us to just put the whole thing to rest. So let's get started with that right now. So mom shaming. It's probably been around since the beginning of time. There are stories in every religious and cultural tradition about how children are supposed to be raised. Children should be seen and not heard anyone. And also about how mothers are supposed to act. Cough, cough. Donna Reed. Cough, cough. Anyone who diverges from the prescribed path is brutalized, ostracized, or even killed, depending on the religion and the level of fundamentalism in the culture. But we're going to stay mostly away from religion and look at things from a more cultural lens. In this episode, we're going to talk about what mom shaming looks like and what mom shaming feels like from each personality perspective, because I think it will be interesting for people to know and understand how others may feel about this incredibly destructive force. For perspective, and I think this is important to note, I was born and raised as a white, middle-class, American, cisgender woman. And that's the lens I know. So while I know the lens is different for other people, that's just where this particular discussion starts. For those who are new to the podcast, when I talk about people in their particular situation, I use the DISC behavior system, which includes the driven, inspired, supportive, and cautious personalities, also known as D-I-S-N-C. And I use those terms interchangeably. I just want you to know that. So here we go. As always, we're going to start with the D or driven personality. Driven women know what they want, and they almost always have a plan to get there. And that plan is straightforward and fast. They mostly could care less what other people think of them. But contrary to popular belief, driven women love their children fiercely. And mom shaming is one of the few ways to damage the heart of the driven woman. They may joke about leaving their kids on the side of the road or running away from home, but when it comes to their loved ones, they will fight a live tiger to protect them. They aren't afraid to confront people that they think have wronged those they care about, and that's often where the trouble starts. The D personality doesn't deal well with being shamed, and you can bet money that their reaction is going to be anger. If they disagree with your shame-filled judgment, they will come after you in an attack that will leave you reeling. If they disagree with you, they'll become defensive and angry in a different way because guess what? Driven women do not like to be wrong. Honestly, none of us like to be wrong, but the D personality is the one that will fight back the hardest and will turn that shame right back at you. If you are a D woman or someone who has been on the receiving end of that kind of anger, you know what I'm talking about. So what have you accomplished by shaming them? One of the best things about a driven woman is that when she blows, she moves past it quickly. One of the worst things is that she can do a lot of damage in the process of blowing up. So before you shame a driven woman, you better be sure that you can handle the backlash because it will be severe and without remorse. They will metaphorically chew you up and spit you out and walk away without another thought. In addition, when you cross that line, there is no coming back from it. 
So be warned, my friends. Moving on to the I personality, that's a very different story. These inspired women love people and they want people to like them back. So if an I woman is in balance, she can laugh off your mom shaming because she loves being the mom who makes life fun. If she's out of balance, mom shaming can send her into a very deep spiral of guilt, sadness, because she knows she doesn't fit the ideal of what a mother is supposed to be. And I'm putting that ideal and supposed in air quotes. You know what I mean? It will haunt her in her dark moments. Like I said, if she's in balance, she'll laugh it off. Mostly because she completely understands that none of us is perfect. In fact, she'll probably shake her head and bless your heart as she realizes you're probably having a bad day and maybe you're feeling like a bad mom yourself. So you need to project that feeling onto someone else and she will forgive you and go about her merry way because yes, she is that forgiving. Now out of balance, things get a little tricky because the I personality can be jealous and cutting. They'll lash out and find the most unkind thing that they can say about you and exploit it. They are the epitome of someone who will protect themselves by shining the light on your insecurities so they feel less broken and put down. And it can get downright ugly. It's truly better to just leave this personality alone because she would much prefer to be happy and have fun. And if you take that from them, you will suffer as much as they do. And that is no fun for anyone. Next, we have the S personality. And they appear to be an easy target for mom shamers. They are sweet and kind and reserved. They are the most likely to have children who act out without consequence because the S personality detests confrontation. And that makes it easy to shame them. Unfortunately, because they are tenderhearted, shamers usually hit the mark with the S personality. But listen to me when I tell you there is a limit. And when you hit that limit, look out. The supportive personality is called that for a reason. When you shame them, they often react similarly to the I personality if they're in balance. They will bless your heart and maybe even ask others if there's something difficult going on in your life. They will forgive you over and over because their patience level is incredibly high. And they may even try to do something nice for, to make you feel better, which I know sounds counterintuitive, but that's the way the S personality is wired. When they hit their limit though, who buddy, it can get fierce. The S personality is hands down the best at being passive aggressive. And if you don't get what they're trying to tell you, it will escalate until they blow very similarly to a driven personality which really stuns people because it's so out of character for the normally quiet and supportive S personality. Trust me, it's a rare thing to see an S personality that out of balance, but it does happen. And when it does, everyone in the path of that wrath suffers. Unfortunately for the supportive woman, that will then deplete her for days or longer and it will cause her to spiral in guilt and even more shame than the mom shamer may have even intended. So before you shame somebody like that, here's the thought. Do you really want to be a participant in that? Because if you do, you don't belong in my community unless you're looking to change. And that's the truth. And then finally, we have the cautious personality. So let's start with the understanding that the C mom wants to do things right. And I'm putting that in air quotes more than any other personality. They are already their own worst critic. And while other personality types may also be their own worst critic, they do not struggle with forgiving themselves for making mistakes like the C personality does. The C personality thinks everything through. 
often overthinks everything through. (laughs) They think of the possible outcomes before they act, and they do their best to make sure that everything works out perfectly. Criticism is way harder for them than any other personality, and mom shaming for them is criticism to the 10th power. No one thinks more about being a good parent than the cautious woman. She wants to be perfect and wants her children to be perfect too. She knows that can't happen, but it doesn't stop her from trying and trying and trying some more. Mom shaming for this personality is just, it's doubly damaging because she's a task oriented and reserved person. And because of that, they often struggle with their people skills. So mom shaming shines a light on that challenge and makes the sea mom feel even worse about her and her perception lacking social skills. And one of the things that the cautious mom excels at is her tasks. She's the one with the immaculate house and the kids in clean clothes. And if your mom shaming touches on those mothering tasks, she's doubly wounded. And without the support of great friends or family, it can destroy the cautious mom. And why would you want to do that to anybody? much less a mom who's just trying her best. So here's my plea for this podcast. Stop. Just stop shaming other moms. Every single one of us is out here doing our best. And I guarantee that no matter how much of your time and energy you put into your mothering, someone thinks you're doing it wrong. Hopefully they don't shame you for it. I learned about how stupid mom shaming is over 25 years ago while visiting with my best friend. I was a new mom. She had a couple of young kids. And I talk about the afternoon that we spent together in my book, Everyday Heroes of Motherhood. In fact, when I think back on it now, that was probably the initial inspiration for the book that I wrote. And It confirms several things that I already knew about personalities as well as mom shaming. I will drop the link to that book in the show notes. Um, But what I learned was I learned about the futility of mom shaming and it made me a more understanding and compassionate mom, something I sorely needed at that age. And it made me more compassionate, especially for moms who did things differently than I did. The choice to stop shaming other moms made even more sense when our children grew up and left for college. Because you see, my best friend always worked. She traveled the world for work. And there were times, truth be told, I was jealous. And other times where I judged my friend because she quote, left her kids. She never left her kids alone. She just left them with other people who loved them. And I never shamed her out loud for working and she never shamed me out loud for staying home. Although I'm sure she had moments where she wondered why I didn't work to help support my family. You know, we had lunch not long after our, her oldest went to college and what she said broke my heart because she wondered if she had spent enough time with her child. And then she looked at me and said, I guess that's something you'll never question. And it did break my heart for her, but then I shared my own issue, which was wondering if my kids would have been better off if I had worked and given them more opportunities in life. And in the years since, I've learned that every mom has some version of one of those two things running around in their head. And I never want to be the one to make that wound bigger because the truth is, again, we're all just doing our best. We all wish we could do some things better. But the most important lesson I've learned is that our children thrive most when mom is happy and in balance. And the world needs that now more than ever. When we lift each other up, rather than tear each other down, everyone benefits. Marriages thrive. Children are happier and well-adjusted. Businesses become a place to grow better humans and not just a place where profit is king. And that's the world I want to live in. 
I know there are people out there that would say that we live in a dog eat dog world, but that's because we choose that and we can choose differently. And I'm seeing that happen in so many ways. I'm seeing my 20 something children navigate this world in a much more compassionate way than I did at their age. I watch my 30 and 40 something business friends creating companies that will leave a legacy, not just for their own children, but also for the people who work for and with them. They are proving that compassionate capitalism is possible. And that's the kind of world I'm working toward in everything I do. A life where you live your best life without guilt and without taking anyone down in the process. The truth is that there is no one way to create a life that works for you without guilt. Instead, there are infinite ways, which can be a challenge in itself because it seems easier when someone shows us the way. Unfortunately, when we try to follow somebody else's path, it never quite feels right. For some of us, that makes us feel like we picked the wrong program. For some, it makes them feel like they're defective. Still others think that they'll never find what works for them out there. And I agree with all of them on some level, but here's the solution. We've all tried to do things someone else's way when it isn't right for us. If the program is wrong for you and you try to shove yourself into a round hole when you're a triangle, you're setting yourself up for failure. That's why when you work with me, you develop what works for you based on your personality, your love languages, and your individual needs and circumstances. It's like wearing a wedding or bridesmaid's dress off the discount rack versus one that was altered specifically for you. If it doesn't fit right when it comes to your life, it will never be right. And your life should be beautiful and comfortable and filled with joy. And that's why we've developed so many ways to work with us so that you can pick the one that works best for you. Want a group experience online so you can listen more and get a lot of different perspectives? Then you want our monthly coaching program. In the month of June, we'll be talking about how to build your balance, which is something a lot of moms struggle with, especially at the beginning of summer break, and especially if you work from home. I'll put a link in the show notes to find out so you can find out more, or you can go to movingtowardbetter.com slash building your balance. If you prefer a group experience in person, then we have that too. In September, I'll be hosting my first in-person event that we're calling the Discover Better Weekend Retreat. And hey, it's my first in-person event, so I'll get better at fun titles as we go. And this is the first of what I'm hoping will be many in-person events that will help you learn more about your unique personality, your communication skills, and how to appreciate the amazing person that you truly are. It's going to be a great time to recharge reinvigorate and return to your life feeling amazing and better equipped to deal with everything in your world, no matter what that is. To learn more about that, again, check out the show notes or go to movingtowardbetter.com slash 22022-september-retreat. If you're somebody who prefers to go it alone, we have a one-on-one option that you can take advantage of by going to the movingtowardbetter.com homepage and clicking request a session at the top of the page to get more information. Again, that that link is in the show notes or go just go to movingtowardbetter.com. It's right there at the top of the page. Then you can get started on the best life for you and those you love most. So until next time, my friends, my lovelies, keep moving toward better using your unique and amazing personality. I love you all and I'll see you soon. At Moving Toward Better, it's our mission to help you live your best life powered by your unique and amazing personality. To make sure you never miss an episode, subscribe to the podcast today and head over to movingtowardbetter.com to learn more about how amazing your personality actually is. As always, all pertinent links are in the show notes. 
Thanks for listening. Thanks for being you and have a great day. Love you all.